Hey everybody, how's it going? Tim Meister here and welcome back to Auburn. So I'm going to be working in Auburn today as we have a little bit of a traffic issue going on over here. So as you can see, the main entrance into town is causing a whole bunch of mayhem <laughs> over here. Um, I don't know if this is just temporary as a lot of people are moving into town because Auburn has grown a lot since the last episode. And it's going to continue to do so. Um, so I'm going to try to alleviate traffic this episode. However, I don't, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this because there's already an entrance over here into town, a little diamond interchange, and it seems to be working quite well. And there's this big old interchange here, which is kind of the main entrance into the city. And it's doing its job just a little too good, I think. It's just funneling people into this main avenue here. Um, but I think part of the problem is there's just not enough access into the city because traffic coming from Bixton has to go over the bridge and yeah, they just get caught up in this traffic. So what I'm going to do is build a third interchange right over here, right at the transition between the bridge and the highway that'll feed into downtown. And I'm hoping that is going to alleviate a lot of this traffic. So the first thing I want to do is, uh... Eliminate this crosswalk here. We definitely don't want a crosswalk going across this highway. So I'm going to remove that there. And uh, let's get started on the interchange. So I think what I'll do is just a simple trumpet interchange. But I may have to do a little bit of terraforming around here. So I'm going to flatten this out just to provide a bit more clearance under the bridge and I'm gonna soften all this up just like this over here on this side as well there we go and let's get into it oops I didn't realize I was in straight mode this turn somewhat sharp and this will lead into a two-lane road hmm how am I gonna do this I'm going to build a four-lane road adjacent to the cemetery, which will connect to this main avenue over here. And then this road, I guess we'll just continue on out this way. Should I build a trumpet interchange or should I do like a, a park low? Hmm, how should I do this? I have an idea. What if I do this? Will that work? No, because there's a pillar right here. But can I maybe like squeeze it between the two? Oh, might be onto something here. So if I do this, maybe I can do this. This is 100% experimental. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, guys. You're witnessing as as much of a live thing here as it could possibly be. Um, wait, let's do that. Oh, perfect. And I guess I could leave this four lanes. 
up to here and then connect this up just like that and it's not the most beautiful interchange I've ever built but it works and here what I'll do here is change this into a three lane section uh yeah one more there just like that and then i guess we'll do the same thing on the other side but i think i'll do it a little bit differently i have this road coming up here maybe i'll connect this one up to this road Should I do Should I just do something like this maybe? I think it'll be easier. Oh, well, I know what I'll do here. I'll do that. And then I'll change this into a two lane. And if I can fix this up a little better. Oh, it might be a little too sharp. Hang on, maybe. Oh, yeah, I can fix it. There we go, guys. Look at that. That's not bad. You know, there's plenty of lopsided ugly interchanges in the world and this is just one of them so it's it's not like it's not realistic right and here let's uh oh wait that's not what i need to do i just want to make these sidewalks a little wider so we don't have people parking on the side of this road and there we have it there is our third connection into downtown now i'm not too worried about this sharp turn because the speed limit slows down to probably oh 35 miles an hour on this stretch versus like 65 or 70 on the highway so traffic will have already started slowing down here so i think this is fine and i don't know guys this is as good as i could get this transition to be the lanes are just not the same size or anything like that so um yeah, I'll just have to live with this transition, how it is. And over here, I am going to also add a third lane in this direction. Oops, Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, shoot. I don't know if there's a way for me to fix this now. Oh yeah, there is. If I transform this back into a two lane there, and then back into a three lane. There we go. Yeah, that's fine like that. And, ooh, maybe this wasn't the best idea. Because this is going to be a total bottleneck. Well, you know what, guys? I think I may just have to... Remove this node. And then... I'm gonna make this into a three-lane road.
There, how's about that, guys? And then I guess from now on, from here on, I'll just make this three lanes all the way to downtown. And I'll leave a little bit of room in here for something. I don't know why I thought this little interchange would be cool but that should greatly improve traffic it looks like it has however I will say this traffic m was maybe on its way out anyways I it was probably just a rush of people moving into the city so I can't claim that I totally fixed it but I'm sure I it definitely helped there so um, let's continue on um, another goal I had, I guess, this episode was just to continue the general expansion of the city. So I'm going to work a little bit on the road layout and uh, we'll get into uh, some, some more specific things like public transportation in just a moment, guys. So bear with me while I lay down some streets. All right, guys, here we go. This is the street layout that I came up with. And I was really trying to have a sort of historical element present over here in Auburn. I wanted to make it seem like these streets were here long before the highway, as is the case in most cities around the world. Um, so this is why I kind of crammed the highway in between these streets. You can see that it's kind of sunken into the ground. I put a highway wall here just to help with the traffic noise. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to make this highway look like um, like the streets were there before the highway was built throughout town. Now, I'll bring your attention over to this monstrosity. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I pushed the traffic issue just farther down the line and I didn't really solve anything. But honestly, I don't know if there's anything I can do about this because it just seems like it's the AI that's causing this problem. Just... Look at these erratic movements. <laughs> um, however, just before making this video, or, or releasing it rather, um, there was a newsletter released by the developers of City Skylines saying that there's a big patch coming out right before Christmas and included in that uh, update, there's going to be, oh, what's this? Switch on. From the humble toaster to the self-organized sock drawer. <laughs> This factory makes everything that runs on electricity. Oh, okay. Um, anyways, as I was saying, uh, the patch that is coming out right before Christmas is supposed to fix a lot of the lane changing issues that uh, you guys may have seen in the game. So hopefully that'll fix this problem because it's, it's a pretty bad one. I, I, I'm honestly, I, I'm thinking about just removing this exit just so traffic can flow because traffic was better off being piled up over here than it is just clogging up the whole bridge. So I'll just temporarily <laughs> remove this exit. Um, anyway, so now let's get into some zoning. I'm going to have to zone all of this new uh, this new territory that we've uh, got built up here. So most of this I think is just going to be low-rise residential, some commercial Maybe a couple of apartment buildings dotted around. Um, maybe some low rent housing. 
be useful to have. Along with some normal medium density. Just to keep things interesting. Alright, so this is a good start. We'll give that a chance to zone up. It should go fairly quickly. And of course we want lots of commercial jobs over here. And how's this cleaning up? Oh yeah, this is... This is really doing the trick now. Looks like traffic is gonna pile up over here instead. <laughs> I don't know. We'll just have to see how this plays out, guys, after this big patch comes out. I think the problem here is with the, um, the pathfinding cost, right? So each vehicle has a pathfinding cost that determines their route. To their destination and there it looks like the the best route is literally just to take the first exit that is available so i don't know <laughs> we'll let it play out here let's have some more low rent housing over here right by the highway you know who wants to live right by a highway so we're gonna make this into some nice affordable housing for everybody Oops. Was that supposed to happen? Oh, maybe it was. Here, actually, you know what? I'm going to put a little uh, small playground right here. Boop. And how are we doing for parks overall in Auburn? We don't really have much parks. I should really pay attention to that because parks go a long way at uh, providing happiness to people. I'm gonna plop a park right here, and I feel like this zone is a little too big here, this this whole area. So, I'm gonna zone this, zone that. There we go, that makes a little more sense. Oh, I might have to destroy these two buildings. There. That's better. And what about like a large city park, maybe? Right over here, right in behind the medical clinic, which, okay, it's functioning pretty good. We don't have an overload of patients just yet. And unfortunately, I somehow lost the audio file for this next little bit, but I'm just gonna accelerate the footage and dub over what's going on. So as I was checking my city services, I noticed that my power usage was very high. I was, I was almost capping out. Um, so I figured I would check my geothermal power plant and see what kind of upgrades I could do to it. And thankfully I could add another turbine and, uh, and that granted us a little bit of a boost. So, so that should be able to, uh, to give us enough power to uh, cover the winter months because as you can see here we're in the dead of winter in January and it is minus 11 Celsius January is often one of the coldest months out of the year so naturally power usage is gonna be at its highest point um, so yeah that power plant should do just fine for the next little bit 
So what I'm going to work on for the next segment here is uh, getting some streets laid down for an industrial park that is going to be close to the water. Um, so a little bit of uh, modifications needed to be done. Um, so I built this main road here just to uh, to provide some good connections over to the other side of the tracks because I don't want like every street to go across the tracks because that's just going to cause a ton of issues. I'd rather there just be a few arterial routes going over or under the tracks just to keep everything seamless and, and to allow the trains to flow smoothly. So over the next little tiny bit here, I'm just going to be laying down some streets and getting ready for what is to come later in this episode. Well, you know what? As I was expanding the city, I happened to notice that I have a giant oil deposit right here. And I got to thinking, instead of building a nice neighborhood over here, why don't I build a giant industrial park? You know, Auburn is still a very historical city, and oftentimes you'll find historical or like older type industrial sectors right by the water, right? Especially here, we're right by a giant bay, you know, water transportation is is probably a, a very good option. So I am going to make a big seaport over here. And uh, with that, it'll be a perfect location to extract some of this oil. Uh, so let's see here. Because of course I want to plop down cargo train terminal although hang on can i can i have a built-in one inside of a cargo harbor i wonder i forget now oh we got a little island in the way but if i were to like put this here it's not really in the way of anything i think i'm gonna go ahead and do that guys so I'm going to remove this stretch road. I'm going to pause the game real quick because I'm going to eliminate some traffic. So if I put this here, let's check what kind of upgrades we can have. We can have cargo cranes, railway connection. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to put this here and look at that. We have a rail line that can connect directly up to the cargo container. And I'll just have a squiggly road connecting up with 
our existing road over here. There we are, and I think I'm gonna do a little bit of terraforming just to make the port look a bit more natural. So I'm gonna excavate this land just like this. There. And then maybe I'll do the same over here. Oh, is that like messing everything up? No, it's not. Okay, it's good. Whoa! There we are. There. It just, I feel like this way the port just fits more naturally among, uh, along the water. So then, let's uh, hook this up, just like that, that should do it. It's going to be like a total maze of boats going through here eventually. Oi, I didn't really think this through though, because how am I going to hook up my rail line now? Hmm. And I was also thinking of putting down a cargo rail terminal as well, but this is still a pretty large structure. Hmm, I don't know, guys. I might pass on that. But let's try to figure out how I'm gonna connect this up to the main line. It's gonna be just as simple as when something like this maybe I guess so I mean that works it removes a little bit of road access but it's not the end of the world still leaves me plenty of room to place down some industries But actually, how would it look if cargo train terminal? How would it work if I were to do this? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Let's do a little bit of terraforming. I'm going to flatten this out. Oh. Well, it might not work perfectly, but it's, I think it'll be all right. Maybe if I just smooth this out a little bit. And then I can place my cargo terminal right here. I'll just remove these two little road segments. Plop this here. And with the roads out of the way, I can this straight in like so and then actually why don't I merge this into a double wide track here let's try this if I do that and then change this into a double wide and merge this all together yeah you know what that actually looks pretty good not bad at all and now the next step is just to weave this street through. Just like this. How wonderful is that? Oh my god, guys. This is beautiful. Now the only thing... This might not be optimal because I have like so many crossings and, and so much stuff going on here. Especially if I want to bring up a road here. So that means traffic's going to have to cross the station unless I'll just provide a second road connection here. So then it doesn't back things up too bad. 
And we'll give that a try. Oh, what's going on here? Why is it that not working? Softened terrain. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I didn't even show you guys, but natural resources. All of this is oil. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to lose a little bit of that oil to this side of the tracks. But you know what? We already have a university campus here, and I don't want oil production to uh, to ruin the aesthetics. So I'm going to make do with uh, whatever room I have down here. So let's get into some specialized industry, shall we? I was getting a lot of comments from you guys saying that I should get more into it, and uh, I agree. I haven't really played with much of specialized industry so far in the series so i think it's time that we finally start extracting some good resources from the ground start making some extra cash oh i think this building's no good yes this building's no good Quick tip for you guys, if you're going to plop a specialized industry building and you do not see the silhouette of the building just like this, it's not going to work. So you got to move your mouse around a little bit to where boop, you can see the silhouette like this. And now this building will work. So just a little tip that I figured out while uh, playing the game so much. There, so let's use up all the available land. That is going to be our first building. Unfortunately, am I going to be able to fit this? Not really. We won't be able to extract this oil. There's no oil by the water, except over here, I guess. Maybe what I'll do is just remove this road. And... Yeah, I'll just put this down right here. There. And then I think we have some more on this side of the water. So, let's go here. Now, is this going to pollute the water? I have no idea. There, so that's kind of a weird shape for uh, an oil field, but that's fine. At least we're extracting resources. And then over here, I have a little bit of spare room, so I think I'll just put down some uh, generic industries should take care of some of the demand that I'm experiencing there we go and then maybe I'll just fill in these spaces with some more commercial and I gotta get some offices in here too we can't forget offices we get some little offices in some of these corners 
And just like that, there we have it. We have a nice industrial zone. And it's perfect too, because uh, wind air pollution. If I check my air pollution meter, you can see that all of the air pollution is going to be pushed out into the bay. And I don't think we have to worry about it getting all the way into Bixton because it doesn't seem to be a problem over here that much. So in fact, we have very low pollution overall. Huh, interesting. Oh, has there been an update to wind directions? Because look at this, where we have some curves here. And I wonder if we're going to have some dynamic wind, maybe, eventually. That would be pretty cool. So maybe wind would be, like, stronger in some areas and weaker in others. That would be really cool. I'll add that to my wish list. All right, well, uh, before ending this episode, um, I'm going to wait until all of this builds up and uh, maybe we can look into uh, how much oil we are producing at, before the end. But until then, um, I'm going to expand the city a bit more and I want to work on some of the detailing. So, so what I'm going to do uh, is build a nice park here by the railroad tracks. It'll kind of serve as a buffer between the industrial zone and the uh, residential areas over here. So I'm going to hop back into time-lapse mode, guys, and I'll check in with you in just a moment. So for the last bit of this episode, I'm basically just going to zone everything that we built today. Um, lots of low-density residential, commercial, that kind of stuff. So we're kind of getting into uh, the suburbs um, around Auburn. Auburn's not going to be as much of a major city as Bixton is, so there's not going to be a huge amount of skyscrapers and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, as the city grows, I'm going to make sure to include some points of interest over in this corner of the map. I'm just not really sure what yet, uh, but I guess this university campus is, uh, is pretty cool. You know, I made a unique street layout going around it, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but yeah. So, of course, between all of these uh, residential buildings, I'm going to plop as many trees as I can just to add a little bit more... I don't want to say realism because, I mean, it's just kind of subjective, but uh, it just adds a little fluff, you know, between the houses and, and things like that. Once those trees become all matured, it'll look really cool, especially in the fall. So I forget if I mentioned this before, um, but this strip here between the tracks and, uh, and the road that uh, you see here is going to be a park. And the reason why I'm building a park here is just to act as a kind of buffer between the industrial zone and the residential zone. So um, this park is just going to be a collection of like tennis courts, as you saw me plop down, and some walking trails. Uh, I got a skate park here. Just, you know, some generic parks to uh, act as filler. But, uh, you know, I kind of wanted this area to be functional as well, to, uh, to bring tourists in and, and that kind of stuff. Well, this is Auburn in its entirety, and for the last little bit of this episode, I'm going to get into some public transportation, more specifically into buses. So right now I have one tiny little bus line that goes from my main bus depot over here to the port and back. So there's only like five stations or something like that. Not a very big bus network at all. Uh, so I'm gonna expand on that for the last bit of this episode. And I haven't really planned this through, to be honest, so bear with me just a moment here while I figure this out. This is as live as it gets, guys. So I think I think what I'll do is there's not really a loop right now that buses can turn around at. So I'm going to add this over here in the industrial zone. Uh, oh, this is going to totally break those offices. Maybe I'll make this connection a bit higher up. Like, well, yeah, maybe like here. Oh, yep. <laughs> Just as I thought, those offices are totally broken now. And here I'll add a little 90 degree segment over here and might as well add some more offices and industry while we're at it. There we are. So this little street is going to serve as a loop for my next bus route. 
So over here, I am going to add a number of bus stations. Um, yeah, I think that's good. There. I'll do this for now. This bus route is most likely going to expand as the city grows, but I'm going to start things off. All right, so then this bus loop will start at the port. It'll loop its way around and then follow the coast. Basically going to the industrial zone. So this will more or less provide a good um, working commute, I guess, for anybody who's working in the in the industrial zone. So there we go. Um, hmm. I wish there was a way to like segment your lines into different categories. That would be kind of useful. But I guess let's just uh, kind of run through the rainbow here. Make some new lines. There we go. So I guess this will be the coastal route, which I don't foresee having a ton of usage right off the bat. But anyways, um, how else can I do this? You know what? I think I'm going to expand this route. So let's... I'm gonna have some bus stations here. And then perhaps I'll do... I'll do a loop over here in this neighborhood. So let's expand this. There, just like that, and boop. Okay, there we go. So this purple line will kind of go like north to south. I'll just orient the city properly there. And uh, I should probably make like an east to west line. I'll do that for now. I feel like the city's still in a pretty tiny state to have its own bus network though, but still, it's it's not a bad thing to have. So I'll start off with this. Um, let's have a bus station right in the middle of the university here. Another one at this street corner, allowing for easy transfers and it also will service the uh, elementary school, I think. Yes, that is an elementary school. And then it will loop its way. Oh, but I got to be careful, though, because this, this road here goes around the university. So maybe what I'll do is do a little something like this instead. There, so students can kind of make their way around campus very easily. All right. So let's start this off. We'll go in this direction. Over here. So this line will kind of be like a, a downtown, but not quite downtown loop. Going east to west. Just like so. But you know what? I'm so close to the main station. Maybe I'll just branch this off here and add a stop at the main station. And then I'll add one more bus stop here in front of the high school. Bloop. There we go. So it's just a little bit of a detour. Doesn't really add anything to anybody's commute. So let's change the color of this route. 
Uh, I guess I'll start going back down this way. So this will be like a teal green. And there we go. So this is the city's bus network for now. This is subject to change and it most likely is going to change very much uh, as the city grows. But again, this is basically a starter network. So I've got some buses and some taxi stations as a part of the, uh, the train station. All right, and with that being done, that is uh, gonna conclude this episode. So as you can see, this is Auburn in its current state. I actually really, really like this city. You know, it's, it's one thing to like make these massive metropolises, which is really cool, but sometimes it's fun to just dial things down a little bit and create some, some smaller cities, right? So luckily in Bixton, the map layout kind of allows for uh, for two cities to exist adjacent to each other, which is pretty fun. Was the game paused this whole time? I guess it was. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that'll be it, guys, for this episode. I really, really do appreciate you guys watching. As usual, if you enjoyed this episode, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think. And be sure to subscribe to the channel as well to get notified of future uploads. And with that, again, I thank you so much, guys. And until the next episode, take care, and I will see you later.